In the perpetual dance between seasons, as nature transitions from one phase to another, there arises a subtle yet critical challenge, mm -hmm. the heightened risk of dengue fever. Now, that is why in today's dialogue, we will delve into the realm of prevention strategies during the transitional periods with our very special guest, a uh, doctor and epidemiologist at Griffith University, Dr. Diki Budiman, BMED, MD, MSC, PH, PhD, medical doctor once again, an epidemiologist at Griffith University. Good morning, Pat Diki. How are you today, sir? I'm good. Thank you. Good morning, Kainoli. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Diki. Good Dickie. morning. Thank you for joining us. So, uh, Pat Diki, how can individuals protect themselves from dengue fever during transitional periods when, as we know, environmental conditions are conducive to mosquito breeding? Silakan, Pat. Okay, thank you. Um, before I answer to that very important question, I want to also uh, reiterate and also uh, send a very important message that because dengue fever, along with its factor, the Aedes aegypti mosquito, stand as a formidable uh, global public health. The increasing time of this dengue infection, especially in tropical countries like Indonesia, underscore the, the organism for comprehensive strategy to combat this mosquito-borne illness. So dengue not only pose a, a risk to individual health, but also challenges to, to the community well-being and place a burden on healthcare system. So uh, again, uh, responding to your question also, and maybe following the question, understanding the dynamic of dengue transmission and adopting proactive measure in is crucial uh, in our collective uh, effort to curb its impact. And back to your uh, uh, question. So to shield yourself from dengue uh, infection during these transitional times, think about using uh, mosquito uh, repellents like ones with DEET or wearing uh, long sleeve clothes and making sure uh, your windows have intact screen uh, because that's a mosquito around. Also, don't forget to toss out any standing water traps around your home and also like uh, flower pots or maybe clog uh, gutters. That's, that's a very uh, uh, important message regarding this question. All right, Dr. Diki, as you mentioned, uh, because dengue fever is still quite prevalent in Indonesia, and that is the reason why we're talking about this issue this morning, maybe you could also share with us what specific precautions and other measures should be taken by communities to prevent the spread of dengue fever during the transitional season such as now? Yeah, so now if we, if we talk about this uh, community uh, uh, action, so it's a team effort. Arrange clean up days to chuck out uh, anything that can collect water and and also become a mosquito breeding ground. That's very important things. And spread the word about dengue prevention through pamphlets or poster or any kind of media because we have now WhatsApp and maybe even TikTok and etc. And maybe even organize some community events and of course get everyone on board with using bed nets, especially where mosquitoes are buzzing around a lot. That's a uh, something that we can do as a community precaution during this transitional season, especially now in Indonesia. Many cities in Indonesia are uh, witnessing the uh, rainy season, uh, Siska. Dr. Diki, uh, as a medical doctor and epidemiologist, what role do you see for public health campaigns in educating the public about dengue prevention during these transitional periods? And if you have any knowledge about examples of a successful campaign yeah. and uh, ways to do it as well. Yeah, uh, the public health campaign is very important. And when it comes to spreading the world, uh, because public health campaign is also spreading the world, the world, uh, the social media, the local event, and even radio, radio broadcast can be uh, a great tool. We can share the stories, let's say the uh, community uh, uh, activities like I already mentioned before, uh, clean the uh, environment uh, and also detect the, the breeding site. That's we can share the uh, a good story or the success story about the neighborhood that successfully 
uh, cut down on mosquitoes and tailor this message to the local culture and language because uh, Indonesia is very diverse in terms of this uh, uh, culture and, and that successfully, uh, I mean success story can also uh, you know, say, uh, initiate the local initiative and don't forget to involve the kid through the school. That's that's a word also very important because children is the one of very vulnerable groups regarding to the uh, dengue fever, and this can be uh, become a focal messenger in their community. Of course, involving local health uh, uh, practitioner like medical doctor or maybe even nurse or any kind of uh, uh, health practitioner also can give a more uh, strengthen to, uh, to, to, the, to this effort in terms of public health campaigns. And uh, of course, we can also uh, invite or involve the, I mean, let's say the local leaders, uh, religious leader in, in uh, supporting and strengthening the, the, the health message. All right, Dr. Dickey, thank you for those great insights. Now, Dr. Dickey, as you might already know, TVRI World and our program starting point is actually being broadcasted to several countries around the world. So we might want to take this opportunity now to give specific recommendations for travelers from all around the world who wishes to visit Indonesia. How can they be more careful uh, on reducing the risk of contracting the virus? And at the same time, also for Indonesian travelers who might want to visit other places who has a high risk of the virus of dengue fever. Yeah, unfortunately now the um, vaccine uh, since Kai and Oli has the you know uh, uh, strong tools for public health prevention is not available yet for the dengue fever. Um, even the the research now is come uh, nearly close to the the some uh, result uh, or, or there's some promising result, but still. Uh, the availability of this vaccine uh, again to protect ourselves from this infection is still not available yet uh, publicly. Uh, so now for those heading to dengue prone places like of course Indonesia for one for example, pack mosquito repellent that's very important and treat treated bed nets that's also uh, important and get the uh, low down on local effort to combat uh, dengue and opt for accommodations with screens or air condition uh, or, or air conditioning that's uh, also uh, will be uh, will helpful and a quick a quick chat with a travel health workers uh, or expert can also provide uh, personalized advice based on where uh, you are headed because of course, it's quite different between place like in Papua and also, you know, a, a city like uh, in Bandung, for example, or Jakarta. But that, that's a, a quick quick chat with this travel health expert also will give you uh, more uh, advice, uh, uh, specific advice uh, with the local context. But uh, in general, uh, the my message in the first uh, uh, Uli uh, question, it's also important, you know, protect yourself with long leaves and sleep and, and, and that's etc. That's also uh, my my recommendation for travelers, uh, Siska. Dr. Vicky, following up Fiska's question about travel and your explanation as well, uh, speaking about dengue fever in a bigger scale, are there any specific region in the world that we should pay more closer attention to when we visit these regions uh, all, all over the globe, uh, doctor? Yeah, especially now, yeah? Yeah, in especially the, in this now, specific time during frame. this specific time. So, um, uh, yeah, the bad news for for us, uh, Indonesia is one of the uh, red, I would say, uh, red line, uh, red, uh, yes, a red line of a red country that also uh, in, in on the list of these dengue endemic uh, countries. And of course, for Asia Pacific, um, the majority of us already impacted and also uh, have having these uh, uh, dengue fever uh, uh, endemic uh, problems. So if you, or uh, we, we go to this, uh, especially uh, Asia Pacific countries, so all, almost all of us, I mean, almost all the country under Asia Pacific is in the, this uh, list of these uh, prone or vulnerable uh, countries. So again, uh, 
uh, we have to protect and if we can minimize your travel during this uh, uh, dengue season because uh, I, I assume or predict that the dengue season especially will be peak uh, during this month and until mid uh, next month. So after that, I think it's safer for you to, to have this travel. But uh, again, uh, keep in touch with the uh, local expert and also with this uh, TVRI also world news so you can keep uh, well informed about the current and the latest situation. Back to you, Oli. All right, Dr. Dickey. Now, in order to give the public better understanding about the virus, maybe you as our expert, can you give us a more uh, background information about the relationship between climate factors? Is that why it is so prevalent in Indonesia? And how does uh, the virus actually transmit from the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes to human? Maybe you can give us more specifics on that? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so in 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 a very short explanation and brief explanation talking about climate and dengue warmer and wetter weather creates a cozy spot for Aedes aegypti mosquitoes so more rains means more places for them to breed that's a very important message <clears throat> it's it's mean not only more rain especially uh, actually but more water uh, because flooding and also can be also uh, contribute to this situation uh, and uh, and also uh, uh, the 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 uh, water uh, which is stagnant in some of area keep an eye on the weather patterns and have early warning system that's why in place is so uh, it's very important so communities can brace themselves uh, again uh, uh, we actually, and I as the expert on global security witnessing, the trend of this uh, dengue epidemic outbreak also is increasing and it's related to the climate change uh, worsening. So uh, if we want to deal with this situation, not only do that protection, uh, I mean, individual and community, but also we have to deal with this climate change situation, which is uh, uh, require uh, not only community but also the government as a whole. Dr. Diki, speaking about the mosquito, Aedes aegypti mosquito, mm -hmm. what are the differences between this uh, mosquito and other mosquitoes, doctor? <laughs> that is a very good question because in <laughs> Indonesia, mosquitoes are in abundance. Uh, right, and it's like everywhere can, all yeah. the time. So can what we are tell the them apart? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> okay, I, I, I want to uh, say uh, share the, the uh, latest uh, uh, research update that again Indonesia has uh, become a host or maybe you know uh, a place for two species uh, of mosquito which is uh, can transmit and become a factor of this uh, dengue fever. Uh, one is Aedes aegypti. The second one Aedes. Albopictus. Those two uh, ides, uh, we call it hematophag. Hematophags mean they uh, they bite us and suck our blood uh, to mature their uh, uh, eggs. That's that's why uh, they they need this uh, 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 human blood and. Uh, I don't know whether it's uh, fortunate or unfortunate, but, but the only female mosquitoes, the one who suck our blood, that's uh, the ides. So when they suck this blood, this ides, uh, the virus inside of this uh, uh, human blood, uh, uh, say, uh, move to this uh, mosquito body. So. This mosquito can become the, the breeding ground for this uh, uh, viral uh, of this dengue. So then when this uh, Aedes mosquito in, uh, uh, say, suck or bite the other human, so this virus transmit to the other person. So uh, the other also um, uh, things that I can share, inside of this Aedes aegypti, so far, there is no, let's say, uh, mechanism or, pro, uh, let's say, 
protection or prevention or, or uh, adoption mechanism that can also prevent the uh, uh, viral become you know growing but but so far the other research is about the swalbachia so any anthropod or any mosquito who has a uh, wolbachia uh, bacteria inside or within their bodies actually cannot transmit uh, a parasite or cannot transmit uh, disease to human so that's the, the the situation with this Aedes aegypti which is now become uh let's say uh, uh our our enemy for 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 this global health uh, threat and or albopictus Aedes is this kind of type of uh, Aedes only usually suck or bite the animal's blood. So so that's the quite uh, different. Um, uh, and usually they they live in in uh, uh, let's say a fatty field or some forest or uh, near the the uh, rural area. So um, the problem with this uh, uh, problem of the the situation now that. The more, I mean, the warmer weather, uh, the more hot the 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 the, uh, the, the degree of the, the climate. So this mosquito can uh, uh, fly far than than before. So this situation uh, can uh, can be uh, seen in, like, say, in Puncak Bogor uh, city in early seventies, early maybe eighty even. Uh, there is non uh, dengue infection in Puncak Bogor, but now after many decades, we can find this uh, Aedes aegypti in a, a high uh, uh, latitude. So that's also another situation that we face. But uh, the solution, uh, and Uli, is it doesn't mean we have to you know eradicate eliminate all the mosquito because that's that's not the environmentally friendly approach or solution because a mosquito themselves also contribute to the uh, you know healthy environment because they become you know a uh, 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 source of food for others uh, anthropod or carnivore so <clears throat> again the uh, very important message for this is that we have to Come back to this uh, very important and sort of appropriate environmentally friendly uh, solution. Like you know, keep the healthy environment. No, you know, you know no. Let's say uh, you know, no contribute to the climate change and etc. That's what I can uh, share for 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 this question only. <laughs> Okay, seems Thank like you, it sir. is actually a multifaceted <laughs> yeah, problem, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. DK, we've been talking a lot about prevention, how to prevent ourselves to contract the virus. Now, in the case of if we had contracted the virus, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that so we know more about the symptoms and when would be the time when we really need to help uh, seek professional help to make sure that uh, it doesn't come to uh, fatal conclusions. Yeah, so again... When you are already aware or, and uh, well informed that in your environment, let's say in your neighbor, there's some case of the dengue fever, even maybe already uh, hospitalized. So you have to be really aware that if you have a fever and some uh, sign in your skin, we call it uh, like a uh, rash or something, it's better to go to the doctor. To make sure that you are, uh, uh, yeah, you are not get this uh, dengue fever. That's my my recommendation. And if there is not yet uh, the dengue fever infection in your uh, neighborhood, so it is better also to let's say observe your uh, family member or yourself, even yourself. Uh, uh, to if your fever more than two days. Now, so it's better that you you visit uh, uh, the doctor because it's mean you face the viral infection or maybe bacterial infection, and the doctor or health practitioner will decide that uh, diagnose which, whether you are in uh, this uh, uh, dengue fever or not. But uh, again, uh, the other thing also, if you feel like a pain 
we call it uh, intraorbital yeah behind your eyes that's also one of the uh, uh, a sign of this uh, uh, dengue fever uh, not only high fever for two or three days but also the the, the uh, pain uh, behind your eyes and also you know uh, 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 the the pain in your uh, 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 what I say um, I forgot in 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 <laughs> because we call it the uh, joints pain. We call it also myalgia. Myalgia is like uh, your your muscle is very very uh, pain and also weak. That's also another uh, uh, what's a symptom of this disease. But uh, also uh, if you have epitaxis, um, um, I'm not, it's a blood uh, you know, your your your, your nose. Uh, has a, a maybe have a, a, a blood and also when when you you brush your teeth and you you find something out okay it's like a small blood in in your uh, mouth so that's also another uh, uh, let's say strong uh, symptoms uh, because fever with that kind of uh, uh, symptoms so uh, yeah it's it's better for you to to go uh, and seek advice for from from a medical uh, practitioner and again uh if you find this one don't wait to keep drink a lot of water uh, uh especially the, the 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 pure water uh, and and also especially for for children because they are usually you know it's not easy to 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 feel uh, something wrong with the body so you have to make sure they have this uh uh, uh what say enough intake of the water and again uh, if necessary uh, you can also take some uh, uh, let's say reducing uh, medicine to reduce the, the uh, pain and also fever like you know paracetamol for example that's a the generic one and again don't wait to seek the medical uh, uh, said advice go to the medical doctor that's uh, my my uh, advice uh, Siska Dr. Diki, thank you so much for your advice. It's been such an interesting talk, and we learned so much from you. And uh, have a great day, sir. Thank you, Dr. Diki. Yeah, thank you, you Siska and Uli. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Dr. Diki Budiman, medical doctor, epidemiologist from Griffith University. Wow, it's amazing to think how such small, tiny creatures can create such a <laughs> havoc in the community. Indeed. So please stay safe, everyone. Make yes. sure you do everything that Dr. Diki has just explained. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we wish you always the best of health. So stay close and starting point, we'll be right back after these messages.